Hello students, now we are going to study another red algae and that is Batrachospoma. So we start with systematic position. Divgen, Rhodophyta, generally marine in form with predominance of phycoerythrin and chromatophores. Complex thallus attached to the substratum by means of rhizoids. Class, Rhodophyci, male gamete is a flagellated is called spermatium. Female sex organ is called carpagonium. Reserve food includes fluoridian starch, insoluble carbohydrates, sterol and fats. Fluoridian starch, when treated with iodine, turns deep wine in color. Subclass fluoridine, thallus filamentous, growth apical, complete absence of motile cells in the life cycle. Order nemalionales. It is nemalionales. Polysiphonia belongs to ceramials. Usually marine, but few are freshwater. Uh, life cycle is haplobiontic, carpospore and are haploid and bear haploid carpospores. Presence of a juvenile stage or the cantransia stage from which the main thallus arises. Family Batrachospermaceae and genus Batrachosperm, Batrachospermum. It is a freshwater algae, although all other red algae are marine water, but it is a freshwater algae. Occurrence, where it can be found. Members of Rhodophyce mostly marine, but Batrachospermum is filamentous, form uh, inhabiting fresh waters. Mostly found attached to the stones and appears like delicate beaded threads. The alga is commonly called frog spawn. Now let us study the thallus structure. The thallus is filamentous, profusely branched. The primary axis, which grows from an apical cell, consists of a large number of elongated cylindrical cells placed end to end in a single row that is uniaxial. The main axis bears the laterals at various points on its length. The plant body is differentiated into node and internode like structure. At each node arises the uh, beaded, in the beaded form, the short laterals, and it gives the appearance of a glomerule as you have studied in the kidneys. The children observe the picture properly. It is slightly magnified. You can see the glomerule like structure here. This arrangement of branches leads to the formation of nodes and internodes. You can see here on the main axis. This is the main axis. On the main axis, you can see nodes and internodes. The cluster of laterals at nodes are called the glomerules. It looks like that only as you've seen in the TS of the kidney, where you have seen the Bowman's capsule. And you have seen the Malfigen body only. At that type only, we call it as glomerule. It is the same. It looks like the glomerule. Now we talk about reproduction. Batrachospermum reproduces both asexually and sexually. The female sex organ is called carpogonium, and the male sex organ is called spermatangia or anthridia. They are produced from the same thallus in monoecious species, while as in dioecious species, they are produced in different thalli. Now, let us first describe female sex organ. Female sex organ is called carpogonium. It is flash shaped. You can see here in the picture. A female sex organ, the carpogonia are born terminally on small branches of the thallus. You can see here carpogonium. It has a flash shaped bottom structure. It is carpogonium proper and it is just terminating into a spatula shaped trichogyne, which is hyaline and glistening and shining. Male sex organ. It is called anthridia, but in red algae we call it spermatangia because uh, of its structure. The anthridia or spermatangia are both produced in clusters at the apical points of the short laterals. They are born on the spermatangial branch or you can call it the anthridial branch. Each anthridium contains a single sperma spermatium on its maturity. The non-motile spermatium liberates through a slit formed in the wall of the anthridium. The spermatia liberate in water and float. Now let us study fertilization. The male gametes, the spermatia, are produced in bulk. They are non-motile. They are drifted by water currents and made to reach the trichogyne, the receptive spot of the carpogonium. The non-motile spermatia get lodged against the receptive trichogyne by virtue of water currents. The nucleus of the carpogonium divides into two, one of which passes into the trichogyne and finally disintegrates while the other remains in the carpogonium. The walls between dissolve and the male nucleus passes through the trichogyne and reaches the female gamete and fuses with it to form a zygote, a diploid zygote. The diploid carpogonial nucleus divides meiotically 
into four nuclei simultaneously with the nuclear division and lateral protuberance is developed from the carbogonium. One of the dotted nuclei moves into the protuberance. The protuberance is cut off from the carbogonium by a wall and is known as gonimoblast initial. Then the other nuclei in the carbogonium divide mitotically along with the formation of protuberances on other sides of the carbogonium in which the nuclei move and ultimately a second initial, third initial, fourth and so on gonimoblast, lot many gonimoblast initials are produced which by repeated divisions form branched or unbranched filaments known as gonimoblast filaments. The gonimoblast initials ultimately give rise to gonimoblast filaments. The terminal ends of gonimoblast filaments develop into carposporangia. Each is called carposporangium. Each carposporangium gives rise to a, or produces a carpospore which is non-motile but is haploid. Carposporangium is also haploid. Gonimoblast filaments are also haploid. Along with the development of the gonimoblast filaments, carposporangia and the carpospores, the, the cells below the carpogonium ultimately envelop the gonimoblast filaments. It, they produce thread-like threads. These threads are known as enveloping threads. No peridium is formed, no urn-shaped structure is formed as is observed in case of polysiphonia. The structure having gonimoblast filaments, carposporangia, carpospores, along with enveloping threads is called cystocarp or carposporophyte. On maturity, the walls of carposporangia split off and the carpospores are liberated. You can observe in the picture. The haploid carposporophyte, parasitic on the female gametophyte, produces carpospores which are haploid, non-motile. They are liberated into the water where they germinate to give rise to juvenile branch filamentous body which resembles another alga known as cantransia, hence the name cantransia stage. The short branches of the filaments of cantransia stage produce monospores. The monospores again produce cantransia stage or these monospores after germination give rise to the vegetative filamentous or vegetative thallus the gametophytic thallus. Life cycle. The life cycle of Bartrach spermum consists of two gametophytic phases alternating with one sporophytic phase which is however confined to the zygote stage. Observe the life cycle. Bartrach spermum haploid produces glomerule, the male uh, sex organ the spermatangium and the female sex organ the carpogonium these are also haploid. The spermatium and the egg, they are also haploid. The two undergo fertilization and zygote is formed. So sporophytic generation is restricted only to the zygote and zygote undergoes meiosis and after meiosis it produces a cystocarp or a carposporophyte and the carposporophyte is parasitic on the female gametophyte. It produces haploid carpospores. The haploid carpospores germinate to give rise to the juvenile stage which produces monospores and the, uh, or the cantransia stage. Uh, because it resembles another algae. This juvenile stage, stage resembles the uh, another alga, the cantransia. That's why the name cantransia stage. This cantransia stage may ultimately develop into Bartragospermum gametophytic thallus. This way the life cycle is completed. It comprises of, it is triphasic. Two, uh, two haploid phase and one diploid phase. Two gametophytic phases and one sporophytic phase. So it is haplobiotic type. Last but not least, a big thank you to you. If you like it, please subscribe it, share it and like it. Thank you.